new heaven and a new earth. Now he's talking about this earth that is purified with fire and is created a new. He's talking about this earth, right? The new earth. Amen. The first heaven and the first earth passed away. And in this new configuration, there's no more sea. There's no more separation. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared like a bride adorned for her husband. Oh, we're heading back to Eden, guys. Is Eden lost? Back to Eden restored. Here it is, verse 3. And I heard, a, I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, God himself. Now wrap your head around that. You will be living physically. And God, God's throne is just around the corner. And he will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And there will be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Amen. That sounds to me like the controversy ended. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I'll close with this. I'll close with the absolute highest form of flattery anyone could have ever paid to this little speck in the universe. I don't know if you caught this. I don't know if you caught it, but we're going on your radar. The capital, the New Jerusalem, is the capital of God's universal kingdom. And according to the Bible, God is relocating his capital city. And he's relocating it on this planet. Amen. Amen. That's amazing. Amen. Wherever, he wherever the heaven thing is, I don't know, but I know one thing, that according to scripture, God is relocating his home base. And he's planting it on this planet. The one speck that fell has become God's center for his government. And his lordship over the universe. If that doesn't fire you up, you got some issues. <laughs> to put it like this. <laughs> Guys, the curse becomes a blessing. Amen. The controversy of evil. God took that thing and he monopolized on that evil. And he took that evil and that curse and through its inception, he has created something more beautiful than even before. If you, want to, if you want to make your head spin a little bit, you should read Great Controversy where we are told that we will be closer to God post-fall than if we had never fallen. You tell me if God has a way of monopolizing situations. Listen to me. When the human race fell, you could just imagine the devil celebrating and God, oh, the universe. Oh. But when the human race fell, short time, God himself had to become a human being. So here's the God realm, the angelic realm, the human realm. God went from being God in the, in the mysterious incarnation to becoming one with humanity, he skipped from the angelic realm. We are closer to God as a human fallen race than the angels themselves who have never fallen. Because God never became of equal nature with angels, but he has with humanity. Amen. And when Jesus Christ resurrected from the grave, he entered into that room where the disciples were huddled, afraid of them. And he said, behold my hands. They were able to touch him. Because when Jesus ascended to heaven, he ascended forever glued with the human race. Amen. That's powerful. Through the ceaseless ages of eternity, Jesus, King Jesus, shares your nature. Wrap that around, wrap, wrap that, let that, wrap your mind around that, and, and, and tell me if you can even come close to comprehending that. I definitely cannot. So, this is the universe we live in. That earth gets smaller and smaller the more celestial bodies we introduce into the picture. And pretty soon, we begin to realize how much of a speck we are 
in this vast universe that is God's universe. And when you look, when you look at things, <laughs> and you're somewhere in there somewhere, and God is somewhere above all of that, and this soil will be the home base of the throne of the king of the universe. Amen. I don't really care about the foolishness going on in this guy anymore. Because that kind of puts things into perspective for me. Are you with me? Amen. That infuses my life with purpose and with meaning. And it helps me understand, God, help me live a life. Help me live kingdom living while my feet are planted on earth. Amen. And help me be part of the restoration of the resistance movement that is bringing its work to a close. Help me be part of presenting this portrait to the world that God is beautiful. Amen. He's compelling. Amen. And that nothing even comes close to an experience with Him. That's my burden. It's the burden of my heart. And before the controversy closes in this world, I want it to begin closing in my own heart and in my own mind. Amen. Amen. How many of you want to say, Lord, put things into perspective in my life and help me understand how significant it is. Father in heaven, I don't have words. These, these themes are too grand. They're too, they're too big. They're huge. And I don't know how to express it. Father, I pray that somehow, some way, we will get even just even a glimpse of how beautiful, how just, how loving you actually are. We trust, Lord, that beyond philosophy, beyond arguments, beyond trials, beyond anything, if we could be raptured by that portrait, God is love, that, we would, that it would transform and that it would have implications in the way we live. And Lord, I just pray that that would leave its dent on our minds and on our hearts, and that we would begin to live it out in real life. In the name of Jesus, we praise you, we celebrate you, we worship you. Amen. Amen. Amen.